Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. That October night, a chilling quiet filled our house. Shadows stretched along the walls, as if the whole house was bracing for the storm brewing within. I stood by the open door to the living room, hiding behind the heavy, velvet curtains that fell nearly to the floor, heart pounding as I listened to my parents' tense voices. I knew they were angry. I'd overheard fragments of their conversation earlier, and though I didn't understand everything, I could sense it was about me. She's just difficult, Michael. Always asking questions, always needing something. Mom's voice cut through the silence. Her tone was sharper than usual, as if she were speaking of a stranger rather than her own daughter. Dad let out a heavy sigh and I peeked out to see him pacing, running a hand through his hair. Maybe she'd be better off somewhere else. I don't know how to deal with her anymore. Louis, he's easy but Bella, he trailed off, as if the weight of saying my name alone was too much to bear. A hot tear rolled down my cheek, but I held my breath, not daring to move. My heart hammered as if to drown out what they were saying, but every word sank deep. I clutched my small bag, just a few clothes Aunt Maria had packed for me, knowing that my parents had given up on me, that hadn't even called me into the room. Instead they were planning my absence as if I were a mere inconvenience. Dad's footsteps echoed as he approached the door, and I quickly stepped back, shrinking into the shadows. He didn't see me, only opened the door and called over his shoulder. I'll get the car. You go talk to her. The words felt like a punch. They weren't coming to help me pack or reassure me, they were getting rid of me. Mom stepped into the hallway, her eyes meeting mine briefly. She looked at me as if she hadn't seen me in years. Bella, Aunt Maria is expecting you, she said, her voice void of any warmth. It'll be good for you. A fresh start. Her eyes flicked away, as though looking at me hurt her. A strange calm washed over me as I glanced around, taking in every detail. The gleaming floors, the expensive paintings on the walls, all the things that had a place here, except me. I turned, gripping my small bag tighter. Am I really that much trouble? I asked, my voice barely a whisper, but I could see the question jolted her. She didn't respond, only adjusted her coat as if eager to get this over with. Hurry along Bella, Maria is waiting. I hesitated, but then I swallowed my pride. Without a word, I walked past her and out the door, feeling the cold night air hit my skin. As I stepped down the grand staircase, I noticed my younger brother, Louis, watching from the window. His face pressed against the glass, his wide eyes mirrored my own fear, and for a brief second, I thought he might run out and stop me, but he didn't move. In the driveway, Dad was waiting in the car, the engine humming impatiently. I climbed into the back seat and the door slammed shut behind me, locking me in the silence. My parents didn't say a word the entire ride. As we pulled up to Aunt Maria's house, I saw her figure standing by the door, her expression gentle yet concerned. When Dad unloaded my bag, Aunt Maria reached for me immediately, wrapping her arms around me in a hug that felt like a lifeline. She murmured softly, You'll be safe here, Bella. I promise. Dad didn't linger. He gave a quick nod, said, Be good, and left without another word. The car's taillights disappeared into the night, and with it, the last pieces of the life I thought I'd had. Aunt Maria led me inside, her arms still around my shoulders. She didn't ask questions or make any demands, she simply held my hand and sat with me in the quiet. For the first time, I felt a strange peace, even amid the hurt, because I was finally somewhere I could call home. In the days that followed, Aunt Maria's house became my refuge. But it wasn't easy, each morning, I woke up feeling the weight of my parents' absence, like a cold ache that wouldn't leave. School was no better. I walked in, clutching my books close, feeling like I was somehow marked as though everyone knew I didn't belong to anyone but myself. The struggle to keep up with my studies grew sharper. Unlike Lewis, I wasn't the top of the class. Numbers blurred on the page, the words in my textbooks slipping away like sand through my fingers. Aunt Maria tried her best, sitting with me each night as I tackled my homework. One evening, as I battled a particularly tricky math problem, frustration bubbled over and I slammed my pencil down. Why can't I get this? I muttered, my voice breaking. Aunt Maria looked up from her book, her gaze steady and warm. Bella, take a breath. You're learning. It takes time. I'll never be good enough for them, I said, 
the words tumbling out before I could stop them. She moved closer, resting a gentle hand on my shoulder. You don't need to be perfect for anyone. Do this for yourself, you're smart Bella. You just need to believe it. I swallowed hard, her words sinking in. For the first time, someone believed in me. Still, it felt like a steep hill to climb, especially when each day at school was a reminder of how far I had to go. The next day during recess, I sat alone in the library, flipping through my textbook when I felt a tap on my shoulder. I looked up to see Mr. Davis, my math teacher, his expression curious. Struggling with math again, he asked, sitting down beside me. I nodded, feeling a flush rise to my cheeks. I try, but it's like the numbers just don't make sense. He gave a small smile. Have you ever thought of approaching it like a puzzle? It's less about memorizing and more about seeing the patterns. Let's try one together. He showed me a few problems, breaking them down step by step. And I watched closely, the numbers slowly beginning to make sense. After a few minutes, I managed to solve one on my own. A small victory, but a victory nonetheless. Mr. Davis leaned back, nodding. See, you've got it. Just remember, it's okay to struggle. It's part of learning. As I packed my things, I realized something had shifted in me. For the first time, I felt a spark of hope, however small. Maybe Aunt Maria was right. Maybe I didn't need to be perfect. I just needed to keep going, even when it felt like the whole world was against me. The call came out of the blue. Aunt Maria answered it while I was studying, her voice dropping to a whisper as she stepped out of the room. When she returned, her face was tight, her hands clasped together as if bracing for a storm. Bella, your parents want to see you, she said, her voice edged with concern. My heart raced, a mix of dread and curiosity swirling inside me. After everything they wanted to talk, the memory of being cast aside still stunned, but a part of me, some stubborn sliver, wanted answers. We drove in silence. My mind was a flurry of questions. Would they apologize? Would they ask me to come back? The house came into view, larger than I remembered, its pristine walls almost taunting in their perfection. I took a breath, my heart pounding as Aunt Maria squeezed my hand. Inside my parents sat stiffly, my mother's eyes flicking over me, assessing. My father cleared his throat, looking somewhere over my head. The tension was thick, like an invisible weight pressing down on us all. Bella, my mother started, her voice cold. We've had some time to think. We want to discuss your future. I forced myself to hold her gaze. My future? You didn't care about it when you sent me away. My father shifted uncomfortably. We thought some time apart would help you understand what's at stake. You've been given a good life, Bella. You need to meet certain standards. Standards. I repeated, feeling a strange mix of anger and disbelief. You mean you want me to be perfect, like Lewis? My mother's jaw tightened. We don't expect perfection. We expect you to make something respectable of yourself. A career in finance, for instance. The words felt like ice. They hadn't changed at all. I don't want to work in finance. I want to study it, maybe work in programming. That's what I love. The room fell silent. My mother exchanged a glance with my father, her face hardening. Bella, my father spoke, his voice low and controlled. It's time you stopped chasing childish dreams. A career in finance will provide stability. I swallowed, glancing down, but I felt a hand on my shoulder. I looked up to see Lewis standing beside me his face resolute. Bella deserves to choose her own path, he said firmly. You've controlled us long enough. My mother's eyes widened. Lewis, you're as ungrateful as she is. No. Lewis interrupted, his voice strong. For once, listen. This isn't about control. It's about support. If you can't give us that, you'll lose us both. I stood there stunned as Lewis defended me. My heart pounded with a mixture of fear and exhilaration. As we walked out of the house, I knew things would never be the same, but I finally felt free. Like I could chase my own dreams, no matter who tried to stand in my way. I couldn't sleep the night after confronting my parents. Every word of their cold dismissal echoed in my head, and yet, for the first time, I felt a strange calm. A certainty that I had to make my own decisions from now on. But it wasn't long before everything turned on its head. Just days after the reunion, my parents appeared unexpectedly at Aunt Maria's. 
I had barely opened the door when my mother pushed past me, her expression a blend of anger and desperation. Enough, Bella, she snapped, her voice hard. This nonsense about a t do you know how foolish you're being? Throwing away everything we worked for. Aunt Maria, who had been in the kitchen, came in, wiping her hands, her eyes narrowing as she took in my parents' tense figures. What are you doing here? She demanded, her voice low but firm. My father ignored her, focusing on me. Bella, pack your things. You're coming home. We've enrolled you in a finance program. It starts next week. I felt a surge of defiance, a fire I hadn't known I had. No, I said, my voice trembling but resolute. I'm staying here. I'm following my own path. A charged silence filled the room. My mother's face hardened, her mouth a thin line. Do you realize what you're risking? She hissed. This it nonsense won't secure your future. You're turning your back on us, on our sacrifices. For what? Sacrifices. I echoed, almost laughing. You threw me out like I was nothing. You wanted me gone, remember? I'm done letting you control me. My father stepped closer, his voice dropping to a dangerous whisper. You're making a mistake, Bella. You'll regret this. Aunt Maria moved between us, her eyes fierce. Enough. Bella deserves to be happy. If you can't respect that, you can leave. My parents stood there, tension thick in the air. For a moment, I thought they might keep pushing. But then my mother let out a bitter scoff and turned on her heel. Don't come running to us when you fail, she spat, looking over her shoulder one last time. Then they were gone, leaving a silence that seemed to buzz with finality. I felt a mix of relief and sadness, but mostly I felt free. For once, I had chosen my own path, and there was no turning back. Days passed in silence, with no word from my parents since that tense encounter. I threw myself into my studies, but a part of me wondered if they'd ever truly understand. I was beginning to accept that maybe they wouldn't when one evening I received an unexpected call from my brother Louis. Bella, he began, his voice hesitant. They, they want to meet. Mom and Dad, I mean. I felt a rush of mixed emotions but nodded, though he couldn't see me. Did they say why? He hesitated and then, with an edge of hope in his voice, said, they didn't explain much. Just, please come. I think they're ready to talk, really talk. Reluctantly, I agreed, and we set up a meeting for that Saturday. The whole drive there I rehearsed where I'd say, how I'd keep my defenses up, how I'd be ready to turn and leave if things turned sour. We met in a small park, a neutral place, Lewis insisted, away from the walls that seemed to breed tension. When I arrived, my parents were seated on a bench under a tree, looking almost vulnerable. My mother was the first to speak, her voice softer than I'd ever heard. Bella, she started, looking at her hands. We, we know we've hurt you. We didn't realize how much until you spoke your mind that night. My father shifted uncomfortably, but he looked at me, his eyes less guarded. We thought we were protecting you, he said, his voice surprisingly shaky. But we see now that we've been trying to protect ourselves. Our own dreams. Our expectations, without ever considering yours. I stayed quiet, the ache in my chest loosening but not gone. My mother looked at Louis, as if drawing strength from him, and continued, We didn't listen to you, Bella. And that's our fault, but we want to try. If you'll let us. For the first time, I sensed a sincerity I'd never felt from them before. A genuine desire to make things right. I took a breath, my voice unsteady but clear. All I ever wanted was for you to see me as I am, not as who you wanted me to be. Silence fell, filled with an understanding that felt heavy but healing. The day we opened the doors to the community center, my heart raced with anticipation. Aunt Maria was at my side, her usual calm presence keeping my nerves in check, while Louis handled last-minute details with a focus I'd only ever seen him devote to his music. We transformed the old, dusty building on Main Street into a vibrant place of opportunity, each room carefully designed to foster creativity and self-discovery. The sign above the doors read the beacon, symbolizing the light we hoped to bring to other children finding their own way. As families began arriving, I caught sight of a hesitant little girl clutching a violin case, her mother encouraging her forward. She reminded me of myself, full of potential, but unsure of her place in the world. I bent down, meeting her eyes with a smile. Are you here to play for us? I asked gently. 
The girl nodded, a small smile breaking through her initial nervousness. Maybe. I've never played in front of anyone but my mom. Well, I said, gesturing to one of the rooms we designated as a music studio, you're welcome here. Play whatever makes you feel happy. She looked to her mother for reassurance, then let her guard down enough to smile back at me. As I watched her walk toward the studio, Aunt Maria placed a hand on my shoulder. You've done something special here, Bella. All those years of struggle, look at what you've built. I looked around, taking in the laughter, the eager conversations, the first timid attempts at art and music filling every corner. We built it together, Aunt Maria, I replied. Suddenly, Louis came rushing over, looking a bit more anxious than usual. Bella, can we talk for a second? His urgency made me step aside with him, worry creeping in. What's wrong? It's mom and dad. They're here. The words hit me like a jolt. I glanced toward the entrance, and there they were, standing uncertainly among the newcomers, their eyes scanning the room until they met mine. I took a shaky breath, ready to turn them away, but then they stepped forward, carrying a sizable check in hand. Bella, my mother started, her voice soft but earnest. We've been watching all you've done here. We came to help, if you'll let us. My father extended the check toward me, but I could see beyond the money. There was something raw in their eyes, a plea I hadn't expected. I felt a lifetime of resentment threatening to rise, but something held me back. I glanced at Louis who gave me a nod, then turned to Aunt Maria, her eyes shining with unspoken pride. Finally, I took the check, not as a means of financial support, but as a symbol of their acknowledgement, their change, and their hope for healing. That night, as I locked up the beacon, I realized that forgiveness, like passion, was a seed that needed the right soil to grow. And perhaps finally, I had found the ground to plant it in.